back to Europe for round 12 and the rally San Remo. A stunning sunrise greeted the crews. The final all-tarmac round of the series would spring a few surprises. The early leader, grabbing his moment of glory, was Paolo Andreucci. His performance, though, was a one-off. On the next stage, the guest driver in the new Corolla, Freddy Loix, took the lead. Back in the Subaru team was Piero Liati, chasing Loix and fastest on three stages. Tommy Mackinnon's confidence after his Catalonia win was sky high. He was fastest on just one stage though. Science is normally seen as a tarmac specialist, but he was slightly off the pace. Colin McRae won the Rally San Remo in 1996, but his confidence was low after that string of retirements. Oriol couldn't match the pace of his young Belgian teammate, not helped by a broken gear joystick. Juha Kanken and two lost 18 seconds to the flying likes on just three stages. Uwe Nittel was back after a long spell away. He made a cautious start, while the rally leader knew that Liati was breathing down his neck. Yes, I'm leading, OK? It's the beginning of the rally and uh, we need to go a long way. But uh, it's better to have a very good start than a, than a bad start. Colin McRae and Nicky Grist made just one of those bad starts. A puncture and a poor suspension setup meant they ended the day eighth. Kankinen was also struggling a little. He was sixth. Frustrated by the new car's mechanical weaknesses, Oriol was fifth. At the end of day one, Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya were fourth. No, of course, I would like to be on the lead, but also I have to watch what is Tommy, and I'm trying to do my, my best. Mackinnon was third, over 20 seconds behind the leading pair. Loix had had a superb day, fastest on three stages, a terrific performance. But it was Liati who'd snatched the lead. He'd go into day two with an advantage of two seconds. Only two seconds uh, in front of uh, Freddy Loix, uh, but <laughs> it's a very good day for me. Day two, eight stages in the Savona region. Liati was now running first on the road. Loix began badly, transmission problems dropping him from second to sixth. <laughs> Nittel was charging, second fastest on two stages despite this spin, but it couldn't last. A new suspension setup helped McRae leap from eighth to second. Oriol and Denis Giraudet picked up a 30-second time penalty, ending the day in seventh place. Loix was sixth at the end of the day, ahead of Oriol's identical car. Kankinen was fifth, only too aware that he'd be scrapping with Loix on the final day. No more than four seconds had separated Sainz and Mackinnon all day. The battle between the pair was for points, championship points, and Mackinnon was third overnight.
Liati still led the rally, but the challenge was now from his teammates. McRae was fastest on six of the day's eight stages, and he was now second, just six seconds behind Piero Liati. The car is perfect, the tyres were perfect, so maybe we were not perfect. Yeah, everything just sort of fell into place today. I was happier with the car and we had a very good time the first stage in the morning, which sort of gets you in the right gear and puts you in the, the right track for the rest of the day. I think between Carlos and me, it's most important at the moment. So we are basically the same distance than yesterday, so it's no, no much difference. Three seconds at the moment. Another early start to day three, an exact rerun of day one. Oriol would be frustrated in his quest for points, finishing out of the championship positions. Freddie Loikes, meanwhile, was slowly catching Juha Kankanen. By stage 23, the gap was just one second. This spin, Loikes' only error of the day. Kankanen lost that battle on the very last stage, so Loikes finished fifth by just three seconds. And so to the next battle for third place between Mackinnon and Carlos Sainz. Sainz was fastest on the first stage of the day. The position was now reversed. He was three seconds ahead of Mackinnon. Tommy fought back, but Sainz was still just ahead. The battle, of course, was for more than just the place. Championship points were at stake. However, this was another battle Ford would lose. They started the final stage on exactly the same time, but Mackinnon was two seconds quicker. Today we have been fastest overall in the leg by only one second to him, but not enough. But it was the battle for victory which dominated that final day. Liati began leg three in the lead, but lost time. McRae led two stages from home and started the final stage with one second over Liati. nothing more to do, you just have to keep going and it's going to be the best driver that wins at the end of the day. McRae though had team orders on his side. Liati was forced to stop on the final stage. McRae charged through the stage. He looked to have won. Okay. Well done. But in the end, an upset Fabrizia Pons had to incur a time penalty to allow her teammates to win. No, no, I'm very happy, but uh, my job is my job, this. So we've had a, a very tough battle all the way through and we've finished first and second. An engineered victory, perhaps, but one which gave Colin McRae and Nicky Grist a slim chance of the title. Six seconds, though, winning margin, with confirmation two of those two other battles, Mackin in third, Loikes fifth. The Drivers' Championship after round 12 was now a three-way battle. No one else could win the title but Mackinnon, Sainz and McRae. The Manufacturers' Championship, though, was a different story. 13 points Subaru's lead.